I will give you a short idea and disclosure of possible conflict of interest. Of course, we are all in academia working together with pharmaceutical companies trying to get money for better research projects for our patients and also Galen has received money for that. Galen is a consortium of 31 partners by now, many names that you know and I think uh, it is easy to recognize these distinguished universities. But who is Galen really? It's much more. The original partners have been added on by collaborating centers all over Europe, everywhere and even beyond. But who is Galen? Galen is indeed a daughter of the European Academy of Allergology, fostered by this mother starting in 2004 with the um, network application and the grant given by the European Union and it has survived the period of funding. It's now self-sustainable and even again being a mother for Medal and Predictor, grown-up projects which have already also now fulfilled their duty and delivered a lot and Jean has certainly also alluded to these things which came out of these projects already. And what is Galen and why is it special in some way? Originally growing public health concern for my personal feelings, much too little, started in the year 2000, 2001, 2003, and the European Union had indeed a very good idea to have networks of excellence. That was a program under Framework 6, and it was a very brilliant idea because it proved to help bringing together the fragmented research landscape in Europe. And this network, Galen, is really a star project no longer funded, we survive on sustainability as we had promised from the beginning on to the European Union. And it's a unique model project. I will allude to that further. The idea of what is Galen? Galen is a virtual activity bringing together real places. Galen is everywhere in Europe collaborating with the academic society, the mother, Yaki, with other societies like, for instance, the dermatologists and fostering new ideas, but also collaborating with the patients. And the idea and why it is really unique was to bring together the people, the people needed to talk. When we started, we happened to see that suddenly from different labs in Europe, Publications came up without knowing of each other. That is not always good. It's much better to join the forces. There is so much to do in research, so much open questions left. It would not be good to be in competition all the time. Much better to join the forces. So we needed to create platforms for research, but also research is no good if we are not able to transport it, to translate it to our patients and to disseminate in the end the results. Last but not least, we also need to create awareness for a disease which is still unfortunately trivialized. We have achieved that the EU recognizes Galen and has made a reference in the official council conclusions to Galen and we are still helping you in finding better knowledge, although we have to criticize, I honestly have to say that we have to criticize the EU, we still need much more knowledge about what is around. We have problems, we have new pollen, we have new food, we have new chemical allergens coming into the European Union. We have a change in architecture, vegetation. I've just been looking at the gardening um, where I see in Berlin suddenly Japanese cedar coming up as a nice looking plant where you can imagine what's going to happen with the most popular pollen allergen in Japan if people plant that in their garden. It's certainly not a good idea and we have no good pollen counts. We have no good alert system. 
what John Bousquet has just described is a good step to collect data, but we need much more. That's what we really want. And why do we want it? Well, we, we want it because Galen, again, together with economists from Harvard University, um, puts a highlight on the fact that allergies are a burden which we cannot tolerate in the European Union, a burden which means that untreated allergies impair the functions, cognitive functions, that is the so-called presenteeism. All of you sitting there, I can't see you unfortunately, but all of you sitting there, you remember the last time when you had a common code, you couldn't concentrate, you'll be at your working place, but but you're not as good. You simply lose time. And this is what is meant to be money for an employer. And in fact, this starts at school already. The chance to drop a grade at school if you have untreated allergic rhinitis compared winter to summer exams in the pollen time is 40%, at least one grade. And if you take the wrong medication, like the old first generation sedating antihistamines, you don't sneeze anymore but you can concentrate even less, 70% chance to drop a grade. Now for the economy, on a single employee, if you only can concentrate 10% less, something like that, um, you already lose 24 to 72 euros a day as an employer, and the treatment, as you all know, is there. It is available in many patients. It's less than a euro per day, but it needs to be done. Overall, in the European Union, we have approximately 100 billion euros which can be avoided if we had better treatments. Now, joining the forces means making you alert, and Galen has decided we need to go into guideline development using good established structures like the ARIA guideline for allergic rhinitis, which has also been mentioned before, and where Jean Bousquet is the key person. Now, one of the guidelines we've been working on is urticaria. In a simple, very similar way, urticaria is burdensome. Like many allergies, I just put it on that. Um, the point is, we are using the most refined processes. It's the so-called great approach in science, in guidelines, showing the real risks and benefits, and then weighing what is best. But what is amazing is that we create and disseminate knowledge together with, sorry, together with all the different societies. It's EACI, it's EADB, it's EDF, it's the World Allergy Organization, but it's more than 35 national and international organizations all over the world, including three different American, North American organizations now. So we really had the breakthrough. Galen and EACI are in the lead here to pave the ground to have unanimous guidelines all over the world like we have it for rhinitis in area and we go one step further again following the ideas of area we disseminate we print pocket guides we try to translate them into all the languages to cover many many areas of the world and we try to have easy ways, understandable ways. We want to have something, a tool which can be used by the general practitioner to, to know what can I treat, where do I have to refer, but we need to do something to help our patients. And creating a guideline is the one step, but the other step is to have a system to have reference points. You can have the general practitioner to take care of the first part, but for the severe patients, for the special patients, for the problematic patients, you need a referral point which is reliable. And here again, we have started an excellence program. Starting with urticaria, it's called UCARE, the Galen Urticaria Center program, where we clearly defined with scientists all over the world in a reference board, definitions, aims, and have criteria which we can show to the public, which we can meet, provide excellence in the management, but also increase the knowledge doing good research and good education. But last but not least, promote the awareness of urticaria by advocacy activities. 
do something, talk about it, tell the doctors in your vicinity, tell the general practitioners how to tackle the disease, and this is also important in our overall mission and aim to create better awareness for allergies all over the world. We need to tell our patients and to tell our fellow doctors, take allergies seriously, we can help, we have the possibilities. So these urticaria centers of reference and excellence, they have the infrastructure set up which is tested, management, clinical and basic research, it is important. These centers should ideally really promote getting better knowledge about the disease and then go into education and advocacy. So we have different requirements, I don't want to go into the detail, it's these checklists and then it is qualified as a center. So it's a very serious idea to bet to get better knowledge into the community and to have a support for our general practitioners. So if, if one of you sitting there says, no, that's the disease, apply, you'll get the audit, you'll get the certification, and you have a real certification to show this. Now, Galen has more ideas. We have the idea to span the world, not in a way that we want to do something to tell the others how to do it better, but to offer. European allergy is in the forefront all over the world, and if you see this map of the world, you see all the already certified UCARE or Dicaria centers are globally distributed, and this is something which should make European allergy proud. And going next, we will have for other specific allergic diseases this center of reference program initiated. We need to talk with the organizations, we need to talk with the European Union, but we also closely need to interact with the European regulatory authorities because uh, the one gap which we identified in our work as researchers is we need a better way to have clinical trials. So we had a conference in 2012. The problem is pretty easy in Diseases like high blood pressure, you have a constant disease. You can see the intervention. If you have a cancer, you have a disease, you can see the intervention. In allergies, by definition, the allergic symptoms are only there if you have the culprit allergen present. That means on a day when there is no pollen flight, you will have no symptoms. You cannot distinguish placebo or verum, it's very difficult to do clinical trials in allergy, especially in immunotherapy, which takes years and costs society and damages also the prospects of our patients because new drugs take so long to get into the real clinical work, so we deprive our patients of chances. And we had this very good meeting together with Guido Razi, uh, its main speaker, heading EMA, and the idea was, well, if we cannot have constant outside conditions, we need to create them. But we want multi-center trials. The idea was, take the pollen to the people. That means pollen chamber experiments, but not in very big chambers where the people can go to or have to go to. We need multi-center approaches. And Galen was in the drive to create this. So the idea was like that pink box, Take it everywhere, do the experiments everywhere, clinical allergy trials all year round, anywhere. And together with three companies, a society was formed, a partnership, something to bring this dream into reality. And this dream has come true. So it can be positions like this is at our university, anywhere where you have a little bit of a parking lot. It's two containers, this is the real picture here, two containers linked together. These two containers can be put on a truck easily. They can be transported. It only takes 60 minutes of cleaning time. It only takes 90 minutes to take these containers on the truck, get going, put it somewhere else, just the time of the driving of the truck. Again, one and a half hours, the containers are linked again. Extremely mobile. And new ideas in there. The chamber consists of these two containers, an observation room, changing room, and the test chamber for nine patients. Excellent numbers for multi-center trials. So on one day, you can do up to 27 patients in this certain locality. And 
this is what it looks like inside. Now, maybe on the first side you don't see the real ingenious technology behind. It's 200,000 euros of air conditioning um, for this little chamber. Why? Because inside the chamber we have a novel strategy exposing the patients personally to the pollen, to the allergen, could be mite allergen, could be cat allergen, but only just above this single seat where the patient is sitting. So in the control room, we can really monitor each single pollen grain and you count these single pollen grains going down on these patients. There's a laminar airflow, there is no turbulence, and only the patient sitting just beneath us is being exposed. Why? Um, the pollen are located into small strips, which you can see in this picture, in this diagram. These strips, like a movie reel in the old days, is a double strip. So the two strips are being torn apart, and then single pollen are exposed and let down above the single patient sitting in the room. And just a few examples, it works. So no reaction to placebo, strong reaction, as strong as in the real life. So we took patients having just that symptom scoring in real life. They could be reproduced inside the chamber and nasal secretion, it works. Uh, also, it is similar to our real life experiences, a hay fever patient going outside, maximum of symptoms is there after an hour and this is again reproduced in the chamber. We also try to harmonize the other test substances. This is a difficulty in the European Union. We have a lot of legal restrictions now with skin prick testing as they are regarded as drugs and need to be licensed in each single member state. But again, we try to harmonize to help here. Now, the idea is this precision pollen dosing per seed, it allows us to do allergy trials, but we want, in fact, more. In this chamber, we can control not only temperature, humidity, oxygen, CO2, we can also mimic outside air conditions. We know the city life, luckily not in Berlin, luckily not in Brussels, um, this is Beijing, the city life is not always nice. We've got a lot of pollutants and these pollutants create airways, allergies, rhinitis, asthma, skin allergy, skin reactions. And this, again, we can mimic in the chamber. We can put ozone, a typical city pollutant, into the chamber, for instance. We can use uh, volatile uh, organic compounds, which we find in indoor pollution, into the chamber. Well, of course, we can use cigarettes in the chamber, what, ne if, if necessary, to correlate it with allergic reactions. So there's a lot of new totally novel research opportunities which we really have to take, which we have to grab, and that again brings European allergology into the forefront, into the real research area. And last but not least, again, one more example where we are from. We are everywhere. We are from Europe and we want to further grow and we can only invite everybody to join this and always in collaboration with the European Academy for Allergology and Clinical Immunology. We go on, this is not far away, December 1st, this is the next Urticaria Guideline Conference coming together, voting, talking, your seat is still available if you're interested in what I've just been saying. But most of all, together with our mother, Yaki on the left corner, the daughter Galen wants a better life for allergy sufferers all over Europe. Thank you very much.